let's talk about WorldCoin, a decentralized open source protocol co-founded by OpenAI CEO. CEO Sam Altman launched its world token and mainnet this morning. Joining us to discuss is Tiago Sada, Tools for Humanity, he- Tools for Humanity Head of Product and WorldCoin Core Team member. Welcome to the show, Tiago. Hello, thank you for having me, Jen and Lawrence. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being here. You know, we've been talking about WorldCoin uh, building up towards the launch. It launched this morning. Now there's a software developer kit for developers. The token, uh, I believe, is surging 60% this morning. Uh, Talk to us about what we can expect from this launch. Yeah, so it's a super exciting day for, for all of us that have been working on the project and the entire community. And there's really a bunch of stuff across the board that is launching, right? I think you mentioned it. For developers, there's uh, opening up the SDK for anyone to be able to use World ID. Um, we announced a new Orb World Tour. We're starting this week. There's a bunch of Orbs in a, in a lot of new cities, and we're increasing from about 200 to up to 1,500 Orbs by the end of the year. Uh, there's obviously in the markets where it's available, the token has launched, um, and a bunch of other things across the stack. So it's been a really busy day for the entire community, putting out uh, documents and just processing all of the all of the announcements that have been made, but it's been a really really exciting uh, couple of hours. Okay, what does Worldcoin actually do, and why do you need to get my biometric data? Yeah, well, I think that's the first thing, right? We do not need to get your biometric data. Uh, all of that can just be processed locally on the orb, uh, and you can get your World ID verified without anyone having to have access to that, which is super cool. Um, the the whole premise of WorldCoin is that it's going to be the largest network of unique humans. And so when you sign up, you get something that is called a World ID, and you can verify that in different ways to show that you are a real and unique person. Uh, the main way to do that today is with a device called the Orb. And so now that you have that uh, World ID that proves that you are a unique person, it allows you to do a bunch of things. Right? It almost gives you like digital birthrights simply for being a unique person. So why, tomorrow, why do I need? Why do I need a coin? Here's the thing. Why do I need a coin to do that? Why don't I just show up someplace? Number one. Number two is, okay, you have this orb. What is it? Where is it? What is it? What's it collecting? And why should I trust you? The same, you know, like the, your founder does AI. I don't know if you're watching the news, but there are like people in Hollywood right now, freaking out over what basically your CEO is doing to uh and what chat gpt and everything else uh, ai is doing to the entertainment industry there are people worried about their jobs so why should i trust you to now collect my iris data that you're not going to somehow i don't know use it for for other things yeah that's a great question because the real answer is you shouldn't you shouldn't trust us and you shouldn't really trust anyone right that's the whole ethos of crypto and so that right. is why the Orb hardware is open source. That is why the World ID protocol is open source. As you can actually just go and see like how everything is set up. And the setup is quite simple. Um, imagine your World ID is your passport. The Orb, all the Orb does is it stamps it as verified or not verified, depending on whether you were found to be a unique and real person at the Orb. But your biometrics is not actually the identity, right? And that is part of why it took such uh, a long time, many years of research and development because uh, the system had to be private, it had to be able to be open source, it had to have all of these properties that are much difficult to build, especially at scale. Right? And so today, WorldCoin is, for example, the largest deployer, uh, as far as we know, of zero knowledge proofs at scale. Right? And so there's just been a lot of fundamental work that has to have happened. And the really cool thing is uh, there's all these documentation, especially now on the new website that's launched today, where you can see everything that is open source, everything that is uh, in the process of being open source. And you can just audit all of these different things without having to trust tools for humanity uh, or any other entity in the WorldCoin network. But why do I need the WorldCoin? Like, I, I still don't understand. What does it actually do? The WorldCoin. World coin. Like, what, what, what yeah. do I do with it? I get it. Now what? Yeah, so the WorldCoin like, token, yeah, yeah, the WorldCoin token is ownership of the WorldCoin network, right? Um, and so, Which as I was what? saying, the WorldCoin, the WorldCoin network, well, it's ownership in the network. Uh, for now, uh, we imagine that uh, it will be used for governance, but that will be up to the community. Um, and there's a lot more examples of uh, of these things so, in the documents that are available on the website. 
So am I investing in a, I, I mean, essentially, am I investing into the, if I buy WorldCoin token now, am I investing into the future of the WorldCoin network? And if so, here we have uh, now, for instance, in the United States, and I notice you're not available in the United States, is it basically selling a security? Yeah, well, we're not really interested right now in people buying the token. We are focused on getting it to people. Uh, we do not sell the token. We um the, the foundation, the tools for humanity, the community, uh, the tokens are given to individuals for free. What they choose to do with that is up to them. We're just focused on having the most egalitarian distribution uh, that we can possibly have. And Tiago, why aren't you available in the United States? Yeah, it's 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 a really good question. I'm glad you bring it up. Honestly, it's just uh, it's lack of regulatory clarity. Uh, we would love uh, to be able to offer uh, the entire world green ecosystem in the U.S. Uh, we try to be super respectful of every country's regulations. And so just out of abundance of caution, there are certain parts of the project that are not available in the U.S. Well, if it makes you feel any better, there is regulatory clarity now, and that is everything's a security. Lawrence. I want to actually ask you about some other jurisdictions. Coindesk staff uh, tried to access the white paper on multiple devices in Greece, India, Italy, and the UK, um, and they saw a message saying that the content was geofenced. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, no, it was probably just a technical glitch in the morning. Um, we, as, as part of being responsible, we, we try to be very careful about um, what is uh, accessible in each part of the world. Um, there's probably just some uh, glitches as everything was getting deployed in the morning, but uh, shouldn't be a huge deal. So okay, it should so be I'm... available there. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the countries that you mentioned off the top of my head, but uh, in the vast majority of the world, uh, yeah, the white paper website should be accessible. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I keep harping on this, but I, I'm still sort of trying mm -hmm. to figure out what Worldcoin, like what it actually does, other than uh, verifies me as a human being and not a, a I don't know, a Chat GPT creation. What what exactly does like what's the network set out to do? Like, okay, I buy into the network or I'm part of the network, then what? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a bit like saying, like, I don't really get the iPhone. Like, it's just a smartphone. What is, but what is it beyond a smartphone? Well, well I, know, I know, I know right? an iPhone, I could call um, people on it. I, that's that's the start. Like, I knew I definitely mm -hmm. maybe didn't have any other apps. But the important part was I knew I definitely could call one. You know, I could call people. I knew there was there was existence in existence apps and things like that. But like, what is, what's the the orientation of the network like you know some some are oriented towards uh financial uh, transactions others are peer to peer like what exactly does this thing do exactly yeah so i think proof of personal is a very important primitive that we've never had on the internet uh it's already a problem today right you can see basically every social media website has struggled with it for the past 10 years and as you mentioned, that is just getting much more important as we move into the age of AI. And, and so there's three problems specifically that we think proof of personhood can help tackle. Number one is this problem of bots, right? How do you distinguish humans from um, people AI. from bots online? Number two is uh, as you start getting to this age of AI, how do you fairly distribute all of the economic benefits that these AIs uh, will bring to the world? Uh, and then number three, how can you start to think about democratizing AI technology, right? How can you make it not just accessible to everyone, but also let everyone participate in its governance? Because this will probably be systems that are too important and too big for one person or one company to control. <laughs> so, Sam may, so Sam helps make the problem and then the solution too. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think that... Uh, not even Sam would say that AI is only going to happen uh, because of open AI. I think that AGI is something that's going to happen and it's going to happen soon, uh, regardless of any individual company. And um, and the, the opportunities and the challenges that come with that are very real, regardless of who's doing it. All right. Uh, Tiago Vitalik published a blog this morning in support of the WorldCoin World 
project, he outlined some issues that he sees, or I should probably rather say challenges he sees for the project and proof of personhood more broadly. One of them is centralization. You know, he talks about the actual physical orbs being created by the WorldCoin Foundation. You know, the general public doesn't have any visibility into these, to these orbs. Of course, the software is open source, but we have these physical devices. And he points out to the fact that the WorldCoin Foundation could still have the ability to insert a backdoor that could create fake human identities. What's your response to this? How are you thinking about challenges like this? Totally. I think that Vitalik's article is amazing. I think it's a very balanced look at the, the benefits and the potential challenges of a system like WorldCoin. So I would invite everyone to read it. Uh, I think that in general, specifically, when it comes to decentralization, it's obviously more difficult to decentralize something that happens in the real world versus something that is purely digital. With the orb specifically, uh, you actually don't need to decentralize the production of orbs. You just need to have many people or many companies be able to produce devices similar to the orb, right? And this is one of the big reasons why the orb hardware is open source. It's not just for transparency or for security. It's actually to make it a lot easier for other people that want to develop hardware that is compatible with the protocol to operate with it. And so you can think of the orb as the first device that is supported by the protocol. But um, <laughs> while there will hopefully be a lot of transparency and accountability about how those devices are made and, and operated, uh, the, at a protocol level, anyone should be able to manufacture devices that connect to the protocol. Except we've seen this happen in, in, in a weird way before with bridges, right? Like when we think about when we think about chain to chain bridges, things like that, those have always been the weakest point in any situation involving blockchain, right? Those are always been the ones that get hacked the most. So here, essentially, if you think about it, it's a bridge between the meat space and the cyber space. And isn't this kind of a, a weak point? I would actually think it is much more similar to an Oracle. And I think that there's very, uh, at this point, we understand what makes Oracles work, what not. Um, and there's the, the approaches are quite different than, than those to the bridges. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the really cool thing is that World ID is a protocol. And if there are superior verifications other than the ORP, those will succeed. Uh, on the same protocol. And so it's just a matter of time. But uh, at least from the past three years, our experience trying a lot of different methods, uh, testing uh, in a lot of different places, um, we are quite confident, as Vitalik points out, that there is just a lot of fundamental advantages uh, to this approach of the ORB. <laughs> Now, say we sort out all of these challenges, we sort out all of the regulatory um, issues we have in multiple jurisdictions all over the world. How do you actually get these orbs out there? How do you get people to, to scan their eyeballs? How do you get people to actually use this and, and make WorldCoin a viable project? Yeah, so this is one of the most common questions See, like, how are you going to fund all the orbs, right? When you actually do the math, you don't really need that many devices to get a lot of people onboarded. When you see the rate at which people are signing up, you need somewhere in the order of magnitude of 50,000 orbs operating to be able to get to the billions of people. And so it, the, the bottlenecks of the project are not where you would actually think if you were just looking at it uh, on the surface. What do you do if you don't have an eyeball? Yeah, well, this is part of why it's really important that uh, the protocol at the end of the day is just an identity protocol, right, where you can get verifications. Just as you can get an or verification today, for example, you can also just verify your phone number and that gives you a certain type of verification. And so as the protocol matures, there will be different types of verifications that people can get. And Vitalik actually dives into this in his, in his article as well, where he talks about how complementing different types of verifications will really give you that full picture of a person. It'd be neat if those I, if those orbs could also do like eyeball check, you know, like you could check my uh, eyes and things like that. Like say, you know, save a trip to the optometrist. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll think, think of that for a future version of the orb. I think I think that's you know that's to make it useful. Yeah, well, I would I would agree. It's super useful today. Uh, you can you can just ask uh, our friends at Twitter. Uh, I think they would really really Ex like it if every one of their users already have. Um, no, that was, that was very quiet. <laughs> uh, those numbers will go down tremendously. All right, Tiago, we're going to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining the show this morning and congratulations on the launch. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. And great to meet you, Lawrence.